Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. So I've been continuing the canola harvest and we're nearly finished. I'm just about to finish up the second tipper load of canola and then we'll take it and sell it and see what we can get. Um, unfortunately I think it's not looking good as far as having enough to get cows after this harvest. Um, best price for canola is at the train station mill. I think that's the same place as last time, right? Yeah. So let's head down there and see what we can get. But we've got 41000 now. Um... I think we'll get another 40,000 or so from this load. And that's not going to be quite enough to push us over the top. Uh, of course, we'll have a little bit more, but it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be a full tipper load. So we might get close to 100,000. Um, but as we know, 100,000 is only going to get us the pen and not much more. But let's see how we end up, and we'll decide what to do from there. Now, I was um, I was thinking of doing another crop of soybeans, but I've been doing a little bit of um, I've been doing a little bit of math on this because I'm trying to I'm trying to be a little more uh, scientific about deciding what crop to grow rather than just going back and forth between soybean and canola and assuming that those are the best things to do, right? So um, so I did some research online. I found a thread on the forums uh, where they were, where somebody had posted the, the yields for each crop. Oh, I think I missed my turn. Yeah, somebody was posting the yield, the relative yield for each crop. Um, so what that means is that, for example, the yield of wheat, I think is, it's like 0.9, it's like 0.93, something like that, um, versus the yield of barley, which is like 0.98, okay, and that means that, that means that barley, and I might have those numbers wrong, I'll have to look at the spreadsheet that I made, but um, but basically what that means is that barley, for the same amount of land, you'll get a little bit more barley than you will wheat, right? Um, soybeans are about half, <clears throat> have about half the yield of wheat. So, for example, then, if you were trying to decide whether to plant, let's say you were only choosing between wheat and soybeans, you could check the prices, and if wheat is less than half the price of soybeans then you're better off doing soybeans because you'll get more even though you'll get less soybeans if the price of soybeans is more than double wheat uh, you'll end up ahead doing soybeans instead of wheat um, and then obviously when you have lots of different crops uh, the you know there are more comparisons to make so uh, so what I did is okay another 41,000 that's pretty good yeah, we'll probably get close to 100,000 here. Um, so what I did is I made a spreadsheet, and I'll make a short clip where I can show that to you, but I made a spreadsheet where I put in the yields, and then I can enter in the, the current best price for each crop. And by multiplying those two numbers, I get a you know what I'm just calling a yield factor. Um, and I just look for the highest number, and that's that tells me what crop is going to give me the most total income for the, you know, assuming that we have a fixed amount of land, which we do. Uh, so I think that's probably what I'm going to do going forward to decide what crop to choose. Um, and at this point, based on the numbers that I'm seeing, uh, it looks like oats are currently the best choice. Uh, which kind of surprised me because usually soy and canola do better but I think probably just because I've been 
I've been growing and selling so much of it, I've probably caused the prices to go down a bit. All right, so if we look at uh, if we look at the prices, the yield of oats is about the same as the yield of canola. It's uh, they're very close, <clears throat> you know, which are around say sixty percent or so of wheat. Um, and you can see that the price of oats is or the highest price right now is thirteen seventy nine. Uh, which is a little bit better than the 1334 for canola that we're seeing. So, um, and both of those are a little bit better than soybeans. So I think I'm going to go with oats on this next crop. Um, I also looked at corn and sunflowers, which I, I don't have a header for. Um, so even if those were a bit better, I don't think I would do them anyway because I would have to buy or lease the appropriate header and then that expense would probably uh, would probably take away whatever advantage in price we get. Um, now basing basing what you're going to plant today on today's prices. Um, is not always going to work because the prices change constantly, as you know. Uh, and by the time we harvest and sell it, things may have changed. But lacking any ability to predict these price movements, I don't think we have any better option than just making a decision based on today's prices. I mean, I think it's better than just <laughs> than just picking one arbitrarily at least. All right, so this is the spreadsheet that I made to determine what crop to grow. So here I've got a list of all the different crops in the game. Uh, right now I'm only concerned with the grain crops, uh, which are these. Um, I'm not interested in cotton right now, nor the root crops, uh, grass, Honestly, I don't even really need grass on this list. We can uh, get rid of those. And then I'm not doing sugar cane either. So uh, this shows the yield. So this is all, this is from the game code. So when you're harvesting, uh, these multipliers get attached to the yield that you get off the field. So you can see here, for example, wheat is uh, 0 0.89. So I was a little bit off in my previous description, but wheat is 0 0.89. Um, barley is 0.96, so it's a little bit higher. Uh, oats are 0 0.57. Uh, canola, 0 0.58, right? Uh, soybean is 0.45, which is almost exactly half of wheat. So in any case, um, you can look at the yields and and so when you're harvesting you can see this in practice too because you know when you harvest a field full of wheat you get a lot more um you get a lot more quantity of product than when you're doing canola or soybeans for example and that's because of this yield factor <clears throat> so what i do then is i look at the prices in the game and i just manually come in here and enter the the best price that i can find for each one and then I just multiply these two numbers. And that's where I get what I'm calling the value factor. Okay, so uh, with a yield of 0.89 and a price of this, this is you know a relative amount. This doesn't tell me exactly how much money I'm going to get, but it tells me relative to the other crops how much money I'm going to get. So then I just look for the highest value here, and that's the crop that at current prices would give me the best money if I planted the same amount of land with that crop as I would with any other crop. Okay, so if I plant my field 11 and 13 with oats uh, at a price of 13.79, that's gonna give me the most money from my harvest. Uh, the second best would be canola. Uh, and there's not a big difference there. Third best would be corn actually, or maize. Um, but to do that, I would have to buy a new header and I don't think it would be it would be worth the money to do that. So, so that's why I'm going with oats for the next harvest. Hope this makes sense. If you have any questions about it, let me know.
Okay, so here's another 4,500 liters. That'll be worth five or six thousand bucks. Uh, maybe we get another 10, 15. Yeah, so I don't think we're going to be able to go for the cows right now. So I think instead we'll I'll focus on finishing up this harvest. Um, we'll get the field ready. I've already fertilized 13 and started fertilizing 11. I'm using the, the spreader on this. Um, I do have to spread some lime here in this area where I plowed. And then uh, we'll start planting with oats. All right, so let's... Uh, Let's take the spreader and see if we can get another pass done. I think I can without getting it onto the crop. Yeah, there we go. So, a little disappointing. I was hoping that this... I was hoping that this harvest was going to give us enough to get started on cows right away, but uh, I think we'll have to wait at least one more cycle here until we get some more money. Um, well, now here's the other option. The other option is we could finish this harvest and then I can just grind on contracts <laughs> for the next day or so and uh, and do that. That might not be such a bad idea. Uh, and get the money that we need. Like here's a fertilizing contract for field 22. 7,000. Sounds good to me. Let's go do it. If I get four or five of those done, and the fertilizing contracts you can do awfully quick. If I get four or five of those done, then then I think we can we can start playing with cows. Or playing at raising cows. We're not gonna actually play with the cows. Yeah, I think that's a better idea. We'll just, I'll make some extra money on contracting. I'll do a few contracts with you here. And then uh, whatever else I need to make up the gap, I'll do offline. And then when I've got enough money, uh, we'll see each other again. And uh, we'll put in our cow pen. We'll buy some cows. I'm not sure how many yet. Uh, maybe we start with 10 or 12 of them since we're not going to have a lot of money. And then... Every time we sell some milk, we can use part of the proceeds to buy another another couple of cows. Uh, and then we can grow the herd that way. Um, and once again, I'm kind of having that problem where when you're fertilizing a field that's got crop on it, it's really hard to see where you've already gone and where you haven't. And I've also got my regular tires on, but fortunately you can't destroy crop on your neighbor's field. Only on your own. So it doesn't really matter, uh, at least in terms of the game. I was watching some other Let's Plays, um, and I saw... I saw a guy that was using... He was using the New Holland, the cheap New Holland harvester the TC90 or whatever it's called. And he was using that with the header from the harvester that I have, which is bigger than the New Holland header. And it seemed to be working fine. Um, but I'm just curious whether that is something that would be done in, in real life. I, you know, I don't know if like if header fittings are, are universal or if they're kind of brand specific that would require you to use you know, a uh, 
to use a header from the same manufacturer as the harvester. Ah, crud. That's really annoying. <clears throat> if you push start just a little bit before you get on the field, it doesn't let you do it. And then, and then you blaze ahead and miss a part of it. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen... I don't think I've ever seen a harvester that had a header from a different company. I mean, I know some of the corn headers are uh, are from uh, Capella or whatever. Capello. Uh, so that's, um, you know, that's obviously a different brand. But there's no, at least in this game, there's no aftermarket uh, green headers. Okay, that was the wrong button. Okay, so it looks like the harvesting is done. So let me, I'm almost done here. I'll just finish up this contract and then we'll go uh, we'll go and empty out what we've got left, sell the last of the canola, and see how we end up, and then we can set a goal for how much contracting money I'm going to need to make. Ah, I did it again. Mm, let's see, down here, yeah? Let's look at how we're doing. 83%. Okay, looks like I'm covering everything. Not doing too bad. And if I'm not missing any spots, then that probably means I could go a little bit wider on these passes. On the contracts, if you miss a, if you miss a spot or two, um, it doesn't penalize you. You have to complete 95% of the work to get to complete the contract. That's why the contracts always finish when there's still part of the field left. And then as soon as we say, as soon as we see that the guy says that's good enough, then we stop. Let's save our fertilizer for more contract work. Okay. There we go. Let's collect that. Here's field nine for 5,000. Where's field nine? Uh, over there. Okay. Yeah, we could do field nine. Let me go uh, fill up a little bit, and then I'll go put a worker on it while we take care of the canola. Let's accept the contract. I think I'll put in a little bit more fertilizer before I head over there. Now, I mentioned last time that I I modified this uh, I modified this silo mod so that it doesn't empty as quickly, so it should be a little more controlled now. There. That way I don't end up <laughs> spending all my money in a second and a half. Which is, with the sprayer, it's not really anything to be concerned about. But with this thing, it holds, uh, I think, 14,000 liters. So if you end up buying 14,000 liters of fertilizer, it's going to be fairly expensive. Okay. 
Okay. So I head down this road and it's down at the end. So as soon as this car passes, I will start to unfold. Now we can just <laughs> essentially drive straight into the field and start working. Oh, stupid guardrail got in the way. Ah, there we go. Got to take out the sign at least. Okay, off we go. All right, so we got the work on that. All right, so it looks like we'll get another 4,000 and so, so that'll give me about 8,500 to sell. So we're looking at about 10 or 12,000 bucks for the rest of this canola. Um, so we'll be right at about 100,000. So let's say we buy 12 cows uh, and we start with a dozen. That's... Uh, 2,500 each, I believe. Let's take a look. Um, you know, I think I need, I think I would need to go to the animal dealer to see the prices. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, cows are 2,500 each. And then there's a transport cost. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, I think it's 10% maybe, 250. All right, so t for 12 cows, we would need uh, 25,000 and change. Uh, 27.5, I would say. Um, and then we'll also need We we'll also need a tank for water. Now that one I'm going to lease. Um, so I wouldn't need a lot of money for that. A couple thousand maybe. So that's 27. Um, and then I'll need... I need a bail spike, which is less than a thousand, I think. And I might... And then I also need the... I think I'll need a straw shredder. Um, I think that's with animals. Yeah, I'll need to get one of these. So that's another two. I need this one that's 2,300. Um, this one actually might be good to lease as well. Yeah, 2,300, I would need to use it for a lot of hours. Yeah, so I think I'll probably lease that as well. Since it's only going to be used on rare occasions. You know, once every five or six in-game days, depending on how much straw I can get in there. And I think once we have those things... Yeah, so so we'll need about, let's say, 30,000. Um on top of the money we've got here to get started. And then um, I will need some additional money to continue to take care of my fields. I'll need money for fertilizer and pesticide and stuff. So that'll be like another 10,000. All right, so we're gonna set our, we're gonna set our goal at 140,000 to, uh, to get the cows. So that's, I'll keep doing contracts until I have 140,000. And um, we'll go from there. <clears throat> All right, let's see how much money we get from this. Okay. 
Got a tight turn here. There we go. And it looks like my tractor could use some repair. I'm getting down close to 50%. Now my understanding is that on the vehicles, a low, a low state of repair will increase the amount of fuel that you use. Um, whereas with the implements, okay, yeah, we've got just barely a hundred thousand. Let's see how our contract's going. Ugh, horribly. What the heck? <laughs> Jeez. Missed a couple spots there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> that's uh that's not too good. <clears throat> and I'm gonna waste a lot of fertilizer on this overlap here. I guess I should have done this myself. See how we're doing on status. Ninety-four percent. Okay, maybe we'll get there with the with the rest of this strip here. That would be nice. Nope, need a bit more. Two percent more. <laughs> I don't think I would hire this guy again. There we go. <laughs> He's like, here, just take your money and get out of here. <laughs> okay, here's one for field eight. Where is field eight? Right next door. So let's do that one now. And do we dare use a hired worker for that? Uh, I'm not sure that's such a good idea. Well, I'm going to use the worker to get it started anyway. Off we go. Okay, let's put this guy away. And I'm going to want to repair my header. Because like I was saying, the, um, the vehicle condition, you know, what you see on that graph there in the bottom right is the condition of the vehicle itself. Um, and as the vehicle condition gets worse, it becomes less fuel efficient. And I don't think it loses power or anything. I think I think fuel use is the only thing that's affected. Um, whereas with your tools and implements, the speed at which they can work will start to go down. So, for example, on this harvester, once the header gets down around 60%, maybe a little bit lower than that, uh, you'll see that we'll go down to 9 kph instead of 10. All right, so let's uh, let's wash it off first. And there's a lot of there's a lot of harvesting contracts available, but I'm not really I'm not really interested in doing those. I think they're just too too time consuming. That's why I like these fertilizer contracts because you can get them done pretty quickly. Even though you have to spend some money on the fertilizer itself, you know that comes out of your own pocket. Uh, it's still it still works out pretty well. Whereas with the harvester contracts, you know, you're going, you're committed to doing the whole field at 10 kph, and uh, it's going to take a while. And then you also have to cart the grain, which takes even more time. All right, let's see how we're doing over here. Uh, we're doing only slightly better than the last one. 
Okay. Well, I'll have to I'll have to touch it up myself at the end. Okay, so let's see if I go in header first, if I'll be able to selectively repair the header. Yes, nice. Okay, and then I'll turn it around and back up to it, and then hopefully that'll give me the, the harvester without having to detach anything. There we go. Repair. Yes. Back. Okay. So we can park it. Okay, I'm going to turn it off now and drive it myself. And we'll get this long strip here and hopefully this will get us complete. up a few more spots over here. Now if I don't get any more fertilizer contracts, then I'll have to do some of the other ones. So so fertilizing will always be my first choice. There we go. Alright, let's collect on that. Um, yeah, harvesting I don't want to do. Uh, yeah, none of these look that good. Well, I might have to do some harvesting then. Yep. I'll do what it takes to finish that up. And get to 140. Um, yeah, probably another, another three or four good missions and, and we'll be there. And then in the next episode we can, uh, buy our cow pen figure out where the heck we're going to put it. Or maybe I can just buy the cow pen now. <clears throat> I do have enough money for that, and I'll have a little bit left over to continue to operate the farm. Where am I going? So yeah, let's do that. We'll get the pen. And then I'll make money for the cows. And the other stuff that we need. still have to finish fertilizing our own field. We got one strip left to do. Okay. All right, so let's look at placeables, animal pens, cow pasture, 100 grand.
Oops. Okay, so let's decide how we want this oriented. What about like this? Uh, see, it'd be nice if we could put it right there. <clears throat> you can't get too close to to whatever else. All right, so we're kind of limited. <clears throat> So if we put it there, no, I don't like that. Yeah, I think this orientation is best because, oh no, you need to access all four sides regardless. So we got water up front. I think I'd like to have the food Yeah, wouldn't this be better to have the barn facing front like this? I think that would be better. Um, whoops. And I messed it up. Okay. Uh, let's look at the height. I want to make sure. I want to put it as low as I can. Hopefully that'll make it I really want it to be level with the ground in the front. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I want to save before I do this. Because if it comes out really bad, I don't want to... I don't want to have to live with it. Okay, so I think right about here, we should back it up a little bit more. I'm going to try to preserve as much of my grass as I can. Let's go right here. Ready? One, two, three. out. <laughs> I want to go see what I just did. Nice. That came out pretty nice, I think. Yeah, it's reasonably flat back here. Very nice, actually. Okay, over here, eh, this part's not so good. When we have some extra money, we can smooth it out with the terrain tool, I think. And uh, we'll continue to grow grass on that. Uh, we did eat up a little bit of our field, but not too much. So we'll still be able to get a decent amount of grass. And then this area over here, we can plow up so that we can fertilize the grass that goes there. All right, so this is where we will pick up the milk to be sold. This is where we do the feeding. Uh, this area is where we would buy cows or drop them off. If we bring them by truck, uh, this is for the water. This is for the straw. And then this is where you pick up slurry and manure to use to either to sell or to fertilize your fields. So we are well on our way. I'm really excited. Okay, so I have some contracts to do. I'm going to get going. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.